Hello again and welcome to the Master's Voice. I am Celestial and you are welcome to this channel. To old and new subscribers alike, you are very welcome. Please be sure to check the drop down menu to get a little bit of information about what today's video is about. Today's video is also a step away from the Supernatural series that I'm currently covering on the Master's Voice. This is a word I received from the Lord about four to five hours ago, and I took time aside to write it and publish it, and the Lord said that the video should also be made today and put it up. And so I will be covering a new word that is not part of the Supernatural series that is for the nation of America and a little bit for Canada and a little bit for South America, indirectly related to the United States. But before then, um, I was thinking of something today. I was speaking on it in prayer before the Lord. And I feel that this is something that the body of Christ or anyone who may happen to find these videos needs to understand. When you are on the internet, which is one of the tools of our generation, that is what the Lord said to me that actually brought me from the relative safety of my blog, themastersvoice.com. That information is, the link back to the blog is also in the description box. He said to me, Celestial, you are not reaching enough people. You have to use the tools of your generation. And this is one of the tools of my generation, social media. I was on Facebook at the time, and I thought between Facebook and the blog, it would be enough. I knew that God would do what he said he would do, which is to publish these words abroad so that they could be heard. So there's no need for advertising and any of that. But it came to me that we in God's house are not as wise as the sons of the world. And this is what the Lord Jesus said himself. He said that the sons of God are not as wise, meaning that they are not as tuned in and not as focused on certain things as the sons of the world. And one of them is that when you are in a space like this, it comes to my heart that many Christians are not aware that in a place like this, no one is taking liability for your soul. So you are almost like in an in a chamber and or in a in a mansion in a large building that has many rooms and you wander from room to room and you're looking at what people are saying and what we as Christians sometimes are not mindful of is that we're not just listening to people talking you are directly receiving some type of input into your soul, especially when it is spiritual matters, such as Christian channels and things of that nature. And whether you are aware of it or not, the information that is going into your soul is becoming surgically bonded to your inner man. So you're listening to things and you're receiving things into the sensitive part of your being. The Bible says that the spirit of a man is the candle of the Lord, of the Lord. So the spirit of a man residing in the belly is receiving input and information that is going into the belly and into the heart through the ears. And people forget that there is not much liability for what you are hearing. And so this is why we see in Christianity, there will be a tumult here and a furor there, and people will make you such wide and sweeping promises. And those things twine around your heart. They enter into your inner man and they cause you to add that stuff that you heard to the foundation of your building. And then when you find out later that these people have lied to you, they have misled you because the Lord was not with them. The Lord was not in them. And they were speaking to you out of the soulish realm of themselves, or sometimes even more dangerously, speaking to people with the help of familiar spirits and demonic princes to deliberately cause dependency and then a later crash of faith, such as we saw with certain things that happened in this nation um, a year and a half ago, or a beer, almost two years ago, when when you listen to things for which there is no liability, Jesus was saying that this is hirelings. So this is people who is ent are entering into the Lord's sheepfold to speak to, to instruct, to 
teach his sheep, but the problem is that they're not coming in through the master's gate. So they're not walking in through Jesus Christ's gate. He has not called them. He has not sanctioned them. In fact, when they stand before him later, he will tell them, depart from me, you who practice lawlessness. But because we are not yet at that stage, these people are operating as tares in the field, along with the ones who truly are telling God's people. And so God's people find that if it's easy and it's fun and it's lining up with what they want to hear in the first place, a, a belly full of, of prophetic teaching, let me call it that, that is telling them that good times are ahead and, and there will be such a reign of mercy and all sorts of things that are building up and hyping up the already misled and deceived hearts of many people, not only in this nation, but around the world. Understand that there is no liability from the hireling to you. So you will take the hireling's corrupted materials and then you will use them to construct what you think is a strong and a healthy faith, right? Because they told you that this is coming and they told you that there's going to be so much glory and so much grace and just so much, so many things. And you take these materials because that's what you want to hear. Because as a Christian, you forget that the age we are living in is the final age where the lordship of men, we are passing the baton, whether we want to or not, into a system that God does not sanction, the beast system. But people think there's still 200 years left before the beast system shows up, even though the beast system already coughed on everyone two years ago and showed that it is nowhere as afar off as people think. So the beast system coughed on everyone, hijacked everyone, but people are still listening to teaching that is telling them that it is very far away and that they will not see it in their lifetimes. They take up this corrupted building material and then they use it to construct houses of wood and straw and clay and other cheaper building materials in their hearts. And then they pat those flimsy walls and say, I've got a strong faith because I know what is up ahead. Meanwhile, the voice of the Lord is coming through anointed and chosen people that he has raised up in this generation and forged in painful circumstances and fire to prepare for him a remnant. Google the word remnant. It doesn't mean all. Remnant actually means what remains behind after the rest has been blown away, burnt up, and disposed of. And so the verse that I'm going to share here is from 1 Corinthians. And it says, for no, 1 Corinthians chapter 3 and verse 11 going forward, for no other foundation can anyone lay than that which is laid, which is Jesus Christ. Now, if anyone builds on this foundation with gold, silver, precious stones, wood, hay, straw, each one's work will become clear, for the day will declare it, because it will be revealed by fire, and the fire will test each one's work of what sort it is. If anyone's work which, we, which he has built on endures, he will receive a reward. But if anyone's work is burned, he will suffer loss, but he himself will be saved, yet as through fire. And so the Apostle Paul here is touching on a very important and foundational principle in faith, which is that the Bible says that everyone should work out their own salvation with fear and trembling. So to go back to what I said, when you come to YouTube, there is no liability. If you watch a video on YouTube and it causes you to do something that actually maybe burns your house down or gets your child hurt or hurts you, YouTube is not going to pay you any liability money because YouTube assumes that you are not a robot or a cat, but an adult of a certain age who is consuming content at his or her own risk. Now, YouTube is a secular company. And if YouTube knows that it doesn't owe you any liability, that means that the viewers who use YouTube should also understand that whatever they consume is for their own account. That means if you consume, consume words from true pastors and true other servants of God, 
Those people will receive a separate reward from God for being true, and you will receive a separate reward from God for knowing how to distinguish pure materials and using that to build your faith. So those are the gold and the silver and the precious stones that people pick up in the kingdom of God and use it to construct gold faith, silver faith, and faith of precious stones. But Paul also says here that some people will pick up wood and hay and straw. And it's funny that he would use these three materials because he then goes on to say that when we all have built, the gold users, those who take silver and precious stones, and those who choose wood and hay and straw to build their faith, all of this is going to be tested in what he calls the day by fire. Now, when you put gold and silver and precious stones into fire, they get better. Any alloy or dross that is in those things become purified out of them, and they become even more excellent than they are in their raw form. But when you put wood and hay and straw into fire, what do you get? Ashes. You get nothing. So if you choose to build your faith on wood, hay, and straw, content, wood, hay, and straw prophecy, wood, hay, and straw, Kool-Aid, sugar-laden, full of lies, so-called biblical teaching, that just because it uses the foundational name, Jesus Christ, has people convinced this must be scriptural, this must be true, then understand that when testing starts, which is judgment, and the squeezing that I'm always speaking about on the master's voice, what you will end up with is not a refined golden, silverish, precious stone faith. You will end up with sorrow and ashes. And the Lord, the Lord says, the, the Bible says here that fire will test the work. So it's not saying, I have discernment and I'm a discerning person and I don't feel that this is loving enough and I, I don't like the way that this is presented and stuff like that. That's not what's going to test the faith and the resilience that you have built. It will be fire. And that fire, if I can put it simply to you, will be circumstances that are out of your control. As we hear the Lord's prophecy today, we will come to understand that the fire that is going to test, you are not going to be able to tell God, I think it's too hot. Lord, I think you need to tone it down. Lord, I think this is too much that I can bear. No, the fire will come. And then the only thing that each of us will have is the type of materials that we have used to build our faith. And if your faith can endure this, you will be counted among that prepared remnant and your outcome will be to receive a reward. But if your work is burned up, it says here that you will suffer great loss and you yourself might be saved, but only as through fire. And I shared recently in one of the videos that if you've ever seen fire take over a building or take over an apartment block, you don't really see people running out with flat screen TVs and the bed and everything. Usually you just have time to grab your children, maybe your passport, anything of that is easy to move of value if you have time to get it before it is consumed. Usually when you run through fire, all you get is your life. So understand that as you jump from channel to channel, which you are completely free to do, you are actually in the process of building something, whether you want to admit it or not, or whether you're even aware of it or not. And at a time unexpected to you, unexpected to me, you will suddenly, I will suddenly face a test of fire and the fire will reveal what you've been doing for the last five to 10 years or the last five to 10 months. The prophecy for today was received today, February the 28th, 2022, and it is called the Iron Gods. And the banner scripture is this, many nations will come and say, come and let us go up to the mountain of the Lord, to the temple of the God of Jacob. He will teach us his ways so that we may walk in his paths. The law will go out from Zion, the word of the Lord from Jerusalem. Micah chapter four and verse two. The first part of this prophecy is to foreign nations. 
I was not given any particular name of these countries, but it just says, he just said, to the foreign lands, this is Jesus whom you worship. The glory of the Lord is coming to the nations, the foreign nations, the goodness of God for which you have been praying and fasting. It is coming to you. God will send you a standard. He will send you a light. He will send you a vessel into which he has poured supernatural power, and that vessel will perform great signs and wonders in your assemblies and lead you to green pastures. The nations who have made the steady investment of prayer, all nations who wait upon the Lord with fasting and with national times of repentance, God will send you an emissary. With them will come healing and restoration of your lands. This is the word of the Lord. Now, the related prophecy for this is, I think I received that word in 2020, and it is called End Times Wine. And in that prophecy, the Lord was sharing that he has people that he has hidden for the final times, the final days, and he has trained them and he has prepared them in every walk of life for the prophecy for this for purposes of this particular message, I will simply limit myself not to the people that God said he prepared in all the sectors of human life, such as financial sector, business sector, everything like that. But he was speaking specifically of servants that he has prepared to send out as what he called emissaries. Emissaries are like ambassadors that represent their country. But the country that these people will represent is the nation of heaven or God's kingdom. And these people, the Lord said, he has prepared in secret and he will suddenly bring these people out into the forefront and display them in powerful end times, signs and wonders before everyone working extremely shocking and groundbreaking miracles, as well as bringing out a very sharpened and pure word of the Lord out of them. There is also another prophecy that covered this, but I did not manage to write it here. It's only coming to me now. And I think it's called Explosive Times Part 2. And there's a part in that prophecy where the Lord was saying that the earth is going to greatly see a rise in volcanic activity. So he said that even dormant volcanoes will wake up and begin to go haywire as the earth prepares herself for her final times. The Lord has said that the earth is now old, that the things we see her doing is because she also is preparing herself to meet her God and to go through the final shakings and testings after which she will be, as the Bible says in, I think, Second Peter, she will be burnt up. Up. For the Bible says that the entire earth is reserved for destruction by fire. But I saw volcanoes waking up and I saw lots of boiling lava being thrown up into the earth, thrown up into the air out of the core of the earth. And at the same time, superimposed upon that lava, I saw men and women in pure white garments being thrown up into the air along with the lava. And the Lord was saying to me, behold my end times servants who have been forged in the fire. So these will be people who have gone through devastating and almost heartbreaking, crushing and true preparation at the hands of the Lord. These are not hirelings who simply appoint themselves and come and stand in the sheepfold and start saying this and this and this, but their fruit will be evident. People who have completely submitted themselves for years to the crushing and the pressing of the Lord's wine press. And that is why he called them end times wine. In the end times wine prophecy, he said that what will pour out of these people will be the same quality of wine that the Lord Jesus produced, where the master of ceremony said to Jesus, most said to the bridegroom, most people bring out the best wine in the beginning. And then at the end, when everyone is drunk, they bring out the lesser quality wine, but you have done it backwards. You served us okay wine, but tasting this wine is the best wine of all. The Lord has reserved what he is calling his best to send out in these final times to bring the hearts of people to him. And so 
That is the first part. The second part of this message in, I think the rest of it is toward the United States. So with them will come healing and restoration for your lands. I'm reading from the foreign lands part. This is the word of the Lord. And he continued seamlessly, but upon the back of the bull will fall a hammer, a great blow. Words of divine prophecy upon the back of the bull. The U.S. dollar and Canadian dollar will fail. The U.S. dollar and the Canadian dollar, which are closely tied together, will fail. The Lord said that even this money, the dirham, will fail. And this money, I think, is used in the Middle East. Their money will fail, but because they are trading gold bullion there, they will be safe from the failure of their money for a season. But in the United States, money will fail. And when it does, the collapse of a false economy will come upon the United States. The U.S. economy is propaganda, smoke, and mirrors, but the charade will be exposed at last. The Lord says the bull will be broken. The bull of money, the bull of Wall Street will collapse. An iron hammer for an iron God. America, you worship money and your God will be judged. He will fall. Your standard, your flag that you wave so high. The God of America, which is money, is hereby judged by the Lord. And now he prophesies to you financial collapse, a spinning dollar, a dollar out of control, a dollar weakened and unable to save even the coins that you collect will be no good. I prophesy to you that you will walk on your silver and you will trample your gold on the streets as you look for food to eat in the days of lack and famine that are ahead. For after your money breaks, what else can it sustain? What else can it pay for? The housing market that so many are trusting in will tumble and show you that it is not a god. Those who trust in the markets are only trusting in clay and ash, the foolish works of men's hands. When you have nothing to eat, you will remember me, your God. When you have no bread for your children, then you will repent of your idolatries. Then you will cry unto me, but only the righteous who have washed their robes in the blood of my son will I hear. Financial collapse is coming. Financial ruin is coming. Fiscal ruin is coming. So financial collapse and financial ruin is different. When you hear of financial collapse um, and financial ruin, that that usually is talking to it's talking to a holistic falling down of I guess, um, an economy, but when you use the word financial, we're usually using it to talk about us individuals ourselves. But when the Lord says that fiscal ruin is coming, then he's speaking of the ruin of the government structure itself. Fiscal is the word that we're using to talk about how the government spends money and financial is the word we usually use to talk about on the lower scale when we're talking about us and how we operate in the, in the larger economy. I continue, your government will collapse in the end days. They will scatter left and right and they will leave you to face your fate alone. War will eat up your borders and your cries will be heard all throughout South America, all throughout the nations for the sake of my judgments that I have made against you. You will be seen in the South American nations. You will be there among them, hidden there with them, lamenting all the day long because of the smoke of burning that will be seen ride, rising from the borders of your home. And you will not be a guest. You will be permanently relocated there for the sake of the trouble with which I will trouble you for all these abominations that you have done without rest. As you troubled the world, America, as you troubled the world with your hammer, even so the hammer of the great God of heaven will trouble you. I will give you blows that you cannot endure. I will give you blows that you cannot sustain. I will give you blows that you cannot return. This is the word of the Lord. Now, in speaking of blows, there are so many prophecies on the master's voice that show that the Lord says 
that because America is so resistant and so hard-hearted, and this is something that I have to say from the position where I sit and interact with a very large number of people through this site and also through the blog, I see what the Lord was talking to me about even before he brought me out to start speaking these things in public. I also always try to remind people that just remember, even if I was not here, nothing about the things I'm saying would not happen. The only difference is that I would have been writing them down over the last 10 years and you may not know or would not know. A lot of people don't know the things that I'm talking about, and yet they are so. So this just goes to show that whether people like me are here or not, God already wrote these things in heaven. And the thing that he uses to illustrate what will happen to America is what happened in Daniel chapter four, which you can find in the prophecy, chop down the tree. Nebuchadnezzar was a very proud and a haughty king. He did whatever he felt, and because he had so much territory under his control, it was nearly impossible to compete with him as a ruler. This is why when the Lord showed the rundown of the final kingdoms, Babylon, Nebuchadnezzar's kingdom, was shown as a head of pure gold. He was the strongest and the greatest of all the empires from the top, ranging all the way down to the iron mixed with the clay feet, which is the final kingdom that we, this present generation, inhabit now. But because of Nebuchadnezzar's pride, God went ahead and judged him in heaven. Nebuchadnezzar did not know this, so he continued living as he pleased until one day God showed him mercy. So God didn't come to him and start singing the reckless love of God in the dream. What God did is to give this man a dream in which he saw a massive tree spreading out its branches where all the birds of the air and all the animals of the earth were gathered under that tree, showing him how tall a king he was and how wide a kingdom God had granted him, much as God has granted America her influence, her power, and her position all these 50 to 70 years as number one. But then because the tree was so high, a voice cried out from heaven the judgment that God in his sovereignty had already taken. And the judgment said, chop down the tree and uproot it and band it about, chop down the tree and band it about with a band of iron and let seven times pass over it. And that judgment translated means cut down this man for he is haughty and proud, and he has forgotten who gives kingdoms to the sons of men, and band it about with a stump with a band of iron to show that this judgment will never be reversed. It will surely come upon him because of the pride of his heart. And let seven times pass over him. He will be under this judgment for seven years. This man awoke from the dream, and long story short, Daniel came to him and told him the truth. Daniel didn't come to him and said, the, glor the glory of the Lord is coming upon you. Daniel did not come as a lying prophet, but he came and he told him the bald facts of what heaven was saying about him. And he told him, King, turn from your ways and do good, do kindness, so that this judgment cried out by the watchers will not come upon you. But the king, with a heart, that was not listening because it was already too far gone, did not change his ways. And one day he was out on his portico, participating in his usual pride. Am I not the great this and that? And as the words were in his mouth, a voice cried out audibly from heaven, repeating the same judgment. And in that hour, he was given the heart and mind of a beast and he ate grass on his own palace lawn for seven years until God had mercy on him. And so America is the same. And the Lord says that when he is speaking to this nation, it's speaking back to him constantly. And I see that. It constantly says, I'm not the one that God is talking about and I'm not guilty and I haven't done these things. And that God, that's not God. That doesn't sound like God. It's not loving, it's not kind, it's not saying anything that other people are saying. And so God has shown me visions in which America is a blonde woman and she is reaching up to try and slap the face of a man that I cannot see. 
She reaches up to try and slap the face of this man who represents the Lord. And the Lord catches the hands of this woman and says to this woman, blow for blow, I will repay you. And so I continue with the prophetic word of the Lord. He says, all these things I have pronounced against you in heaven, just as I just said. These pronouncements have already been taken by the Lord. All these have I uttered by the word of my mouth, that my name will be proven among you. For I am just another God in your land. I have become a stranger in my own land. I am just one of the gods in America. These clay gods, human beings that you worship as idols on your televisions, and the metal gods, the silver and the gold that you are stockpiling in your homes, the iron gods, these ancient deities and serpents that you worship on hidden altars throughout the nation. I, Yah, the only true and righteous God, am only one of the gods in America. Yet I will show you by my power who is God. I will be exalted among the nations. I shall be remembered in America when the hammer falls upon you. Then you will know that I am God and my servants who prophesy my truth to you that is despised now shall be remembered with me. You will know that I sent a man to you, but you did not want to hear. This is the word of the Lord. The Lord has already said that even before me and the people who, the few who speak now the truth of the Lord and are not heard, that he has sent many people to this nation to warn many people to say, come out of mystery Babylon, which means in your heart, separate yourself from the fallen and decrepit truth that is taught as biblical doctrine. There are a few pastors and there are people who are still desperately holding the line for the Lord Jesus Christ in their cities, in their towns. I think the vision that the Lord gave me is called a cup of wrath. And in that I saw a huge goblet, a massive thing filled with what looked like liquid, volcanic, acid, lava thing sloshing around in that cup. And the cup was near to falling over. And there were a few men and women who were desperately holding up that cup. They were at the part of the cup that was tipping over and they were desperately trying to hold up the cup and straighten it. But because they were so few and because the cup was so full and because the cup was so big, it was inevitable that that cup was going to fall and the cup was sitting on a table and on the table as the tablecloth was the American flag. And some of the liquid had already started splashing out of the cup and it was so acidic that everywhere it hit the flag, it ate through the flag, but also ate through the wood of the table. And I have shared here that the Lord says that the end of this nation will be like Atlantis. Atlantis was destroyed by God for dealing with the fallen, for having hybridism, for having a lot of things. And it basically sank to the bottom of the sea. And I've already shared many of the visions in which I saw that the sea will cover America like a blanket. I shared that in one of the visions, I saw the Statue of Liberty sink down into the harbor and she lay down and the sea covered her completely like a blanket and she was no more. So as the Lord was giving me this message, I saw several things. The first thing I saw was something like an aerial view of a lot of jungles, you know, con countries that have a lot of, they don't have a lot of infrastructure, so they're not very built up. I didn't really see um, the fancy developed countries. I saw a lot of jungle that was already green and flourishing, which represents the people of those countries that are already spending their time, really soaking themselves in the presence of the Lord. And then I saw that they became even more green and flourishing because there were abundant blue rivers running along the ground in those countries and the rivers rose and lightly flooded the area where they ran. So it didn't rise and flood like a flood that causes devastation. It's just that the water rose and the water from these rivers started acting as irrigation. So it ran into all these 
forests that were already flourishing. And as soon as the water began to water these forests, they burst into even more greenery. So they, they got a whole new bunch of new leaves and they began to flourish even more. And the Lord was showing me that all this new growth is people who will be responding to the end times teaching and leadership and biblical truth of salvation that he will send into the lands that have been hungry, the lands that have been actually calling on God to come and take them to a higher level in him. He said he will answer that call and there will be bright new leaves that burst into growth on the trees so that they become even more lush and abundant than before. I saw people preaching as sent ones to those nations and very large crowds gathering to hear the word of the Lord as he sent to them to prepare them for the last day's gathering of the faithful, big crowds responding to salvation, large crowds responding to the true teaching of the word of God. I saw people standing in standing room only arenas and there was no fancy setup as you would see here in the United States. People just gathered into large open fields and they were even willing to come out at night and stand for hours hearing the word of the Lord. Lord, and they were responding with so much praise, even though there was no roof over their head sometimes to protect them from light rain that was falling, dew that was falling, no chairs, no place to rest or be comfortable. It was overflowing, filled to capacity, and all they wanted was to hear the Bible being taught to them in ways that they could understand. And I saw massive responses to the message of Jesus Christ. The next thing I saw was the cast iron bowl on Wall Street. So this bowl, as we know, it's in a charging position and therefore it has one leg extended and the head down as if it's going to gore the markets. But as I watched, this bull came to life and it began to slip. The bull is made of some strange looking brownish iron metal and it's on an iron base. Um, and it began to slip. So the, the bull's leg, because it was already extended too far out from the body, when it came to life, the iron underneath it turned into a puddle. So it wasn't solid ground. It turned into a liquid iron puddle and the bull began to slip and lose its balance. And it was trying to pull its four legs in so that it could stand upright. But a massive iron heaven, um, a massive iron hammer came from heaven. And I saw that this was not so much a traditional hammer, it was actually a gavel um, that the judges use when the judge has passed judgment and said, you're guilty, and then he goes, tap, tap, or you will pay um, the plaintiff $2 million, tap, tap. So when the judgment has been passed, the judge will tap the gavel to show this case is closed. I saw that gavel come from heaven and it hit the bull right here on its left shoulder and the bull went down upon its knees and it got up to try and stand again. But every time the bull tried to raise itself to a standing position, it was slammed by this hammer from heaven and it went down again, slam, 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 until eventually the hammer struck the bull on its spine and the bull broke into two pieces a front part with two legs and a back part with two legs. And I'm sure those of you who are farmers, that is a terrible position for any animal to be in. If your horse or your cow or your bull breaks its back, you know that you have to put it down because you can't fix the spine. And so this bull, when it was struck in the spine, it could not rise anymore. And then I saw a red and white Canadian maple leaf. So I saw a big, you know, the traditional Canadian maple leaf and it had the dollar sign on it. And then a graph was put in front of me and I saw a very jagged trajectory that was nevertheless heading down. So even though it was jagged, it was trying to go up and down a little bit. I saw the maple leaf with the dollar sign on it going up and down and down until it finally came to rest at the very bottom of the graph where it was marked zero dollars. And the Lord said their money will be despoiled, which just means ruined. The dollar will utterly fail and be no more. New money will replace it. The end times money of the beast the next thing I saw was a lot of houses for with for sale signs stuck on the door and stuck on the lawns. 
the houses, some of them were boarded up at the windows and some of them were even boarded up at the doors, which is what the bank will do when it definitely does not want the house owner to gain access back into the house for whatever reason. And I saw the houses were for sale and they were waiting for the bank to claim them if nobody took the bait and bought these houses from the desperate owners. So some houses were boarded up and some of them were not. And I saw a lot of people on the phone talking to the to the real estate agents with a lot of urgency. And some of them were calm, some of them were in possession of themselves, but I saw a lot of people yelling at the realtors and screaming at them as if the realtors could do magic to make these houses sell. And remember the Lord said in this world, in this word that the housing market will crash. And so the realtors could only do so much. If nobody wants to buy the house because the market is bad, then what can the realtor do? And generally things looked very bad in the United States at that time, but it wasn't because of any specific thing that the Lord put before my eyes, but because there was a kind of gloom that was just hanging over the whole country. And I saw people watching the news very focusedly, but most of them were focusing on those little tags that run, you know, the tags that talk about the financial markets and talk about Bloomberg and talk about things like that. People were reading the little tags that talk about the Dow and the FTSE more than they were actually listening to the news that was being shown. And the last thing that I saw as the Lord was speaking this prophecy is I saw many Americans sitting in modest little houses in South America, and they were crying and crying inconsolably, especially the women. They were crying to the point where they could not be comforted. They were crying to the point, these women, where their husbands and their children could not tell them anything that made their hearts feel better. People were crying for what had been done in America. For at that time that the Lord showed me, he had fulfilled his word. So may the Lord take glory for his own word and his own pronouncements that he has spoken here, which he will do in his own timing according to all that he has said. And at the bottom of this prophetic word, which I will link in the description box, not in the comments, please look in the description boxes. This is where you find the links to go back to these prophecies. There are four prophecies that relate to this word. And so this is the word that the Lord has given me about coming financial crash, coming housing market crash. And he never gives me timing for these things. I have already said that. So please don't go out there and start telling people that celestial said, sell your homes and go to South America because the Lord said tomorrow, God will do these things. And what wise people do is listen to Jesus words. He said, this is a strange and a hypocritical generation. You know how to look at the sky and see when it is going to rain. And you know how to read the sky and know when it's going to be a sunny day, but you do not know the times that you are living in. And so like the sons of Issachar who had wisdom and knew what Israel ought to do, there is no way to get away from it. You cannot build a relationship with God in a day. God will receive whoever comes to him and repents and cries out to him and say, Lord, prepare me and my household. But you cannot get away from the fact that you must build this faith with true materials and the truest material of all is the word of God. If you own a Bible and you have not read the prophetic books in the middle to actually even have a clue what true prophecy sounds like, then of course you are at a disadvantage advantage. And of course you are looking for someone to pat you on the back and make you feel good about the other things that you have been listening to. But unfortunately, this is just not the place where that is going to happen. So thank you for being with me. I am Celestial and this is the Master's Voice. Thank you for supporting the channel. God bless you, each of you who supports the work that I do here for the Lord. May the Lord bless you and return it to you. Pray for your family, pray for those who do not want to listen, but understand that you are not responsible if the hearts of people are filled with unbelief. The sower went forth to sow. Even I here am fulfilling my faithful call to the Lord by sowing my seed, but whoever rejects the seed, that is not to my account. That is to the account of the one who rejects it. To all who receive it, there will surely be growth in your life. There will surely be change in your life. People come here all the time testifying that when this sword 
entered their hearts. They were challenged. They went back to the father. They asked him, Lord, is this true? And now they have started to grow because God confirmed his word, not according to their feelings, not according to what they had previously consumed, but by his spirit. The Lord says that my sheep hear my voice and they know him. So the sheep are listening and all the other animal life forms that are not sheep, that are not listening, they will simply continue to hear the other voice. For there are many voices that have arisen in these end times and those voices will actually get louder and louder as they are empowered by the rise of lawlessness, the mystery of iniquity and the beast system that is coming. God bless you and until I see you again, goodbye.